What is infection? Basically, in broad terms, an infection with a chance process whereby microorganisms, take it, which can include bacteria, viruses, and fungus, take it, whereby microorganisms with an innate capacity to cause disease, either by invading or uh, toxin production, uh, in sufficient amount of numbers, take it, speak, you, uh, organisms have the, they should be present in sufficient amount of numbers to cause a reaction in the body in order to fight it. Take it the microorganisms try to gain access and breach the body's defensive barriers. And then with you adjust to it, there's a whole inflammatory response uh, which is produced by our body, taken that results in basically trying to overcome the injury or the damage to the body or its tissues. That's just the basic broad terms of infection, basically, how it uh, presents in a body, what is going on in the cellular level. Further, if we dive into the physiology of it, uh, again, there are microorganisms that are normally prevented from causing infection in tissues by intact epithelial surfaces, so a sort of barrier to a body mill with epithelial surfaces, your skin has basically to see that these are microorganisms to prevent that thing in order to gain access into our body, which can further break down in trauma or by surgery. Other protective mechanisms can be divided into either chemical, so you're having a low gastric pH is efficient in that sense. Uh, uh, hormonal, your humoral, basically antibodies, humoral, sorry, antibodies and complement, and along with those obstinates, which cause the cellular Phagocytosis of the uh, antigens that present on uh, macrophages. Cellular level for weak phagocytic cells that include uh, basically macrophages, polymorphonuclear cells, and also killer lymphocytes. So, again, basically just highlighting the normal physiology of our body that prevents the normal, uh, normally prevents the microorganisms from causing infection in our body. Now, causes of reduced host resistance to infections. What are some of the causes? This major hair, you could have some uh, metabolic issues that can be either due to malnutrition. If we don't have enough nourishment, we don't have enough vitamins in our body to get, or either you're obese, even obesity. Obesity may be malnutrition. Uh, along with this, obesity can also present with diabetes or the other way around, uh, along with also uremia and jaundice. So these are the metabolic disorders that can occur in the body that can cause a decreased host response to infections. Uh, along with this, we can also have a disseminated disease, take a cancer and uh, acquired immunodeficiency syndromes, AIDS, genesis, visual and both so These are form of disseminated diseases that can also affect our immune system. Then there's hydrogenic, because unknown for this the radiotherapies, uh, they can cause it. Chemotherapy, people that have cancer undergo either one or both, and along with steroids as well, they can reduce the efficiency of our immune system, try and suppress the immune system. Uh, just not patients that have undergone uh, transplants, they are uh, uh, basically prone to infections as well because they've, uh, they're, they're, they're given steroids initially. Uh, post operatively transplanted for successful treatment. Yeah. 
risk factors for wound infection के आसपास में वो है कि colonization and translocation in the gastrointestinal tract एपीओ poor perfusion ठीक है systemic shock or local ischemia उस जगह का वो foreign body material ठीक है that promotes basically these are all factors that promote infection and you know uh, not have effective wound healing processes poor surgical techniques dead space of the body or hematoma collection is another form of it just like a post operative uh drain me base get so you perform a procedure jahan pe agar dead space aata hai matlab ke if you are excising a mass suppose to us jagah pe jo hai after you've excised a swelling or a mass say it was a uh, giant uh you know either like homa or annular swelling that you took out is better to leave that space open for secondary intention healing yeah place some drains in that area that will drain the collection of serous or serous fluid that might accumulate if you had primary sutured and primary closed it uh and also result in poor surgical techniques as a result it will form wound infections Now, definitions of infected states. Okay, uh, it's one of the common. I'm sure a lot of you have already heard is SIRS, systemic inflammatory response. Because when okay, like the body's defensive response to an acute serious systemic illness, you okay, get. Uh, it's may you need two of the following: hyperthermia, uh, 38 degrees Celsius temperatures is not enough, or hypothermia. Less than 36 degrees Celsius. Tachycardia, heartbeat, more than 90 minutes. Patient is not on the doctor. Or tachypnea, taking breathing, respiratory rate more than 20 uh, breaths per minute. Along with white cell count, yet yeah, TLC, more than 12, or less than four. See, you know, so sepsis is systemic inflammatory response syndrome with a documented infection infected states we get the definition uh, we have uh, severe sepsis or sepsis syndrome the mo or mods which stands for multiple organ dysfunction syndrome or multi organ dysfunction syndrome uh, it's a form of sepsis with evidence of one or more organ failures to get one or more organ failures associated with sepsis results in mods this may respire train vomitus with the level cause like your respiratory distress syndrome okay yeah. cardiovascular heart involved was with the whole cause septic shock follows compromise of cardiac function and fall in peripheral vascular resistance could it affect your kidneys the vein uh, usually acute tubular necrosis picture see hepatic liver blood coagulation system or central nervous system Yeah. Bacteremia is the presence of bacteria in blood, and septic shock is shock due to sepsis. These are basic definitions of the infected states that are commonly used, and you will see in your books as well. Now, uh, the septicemia is an absolute term. Septicemia, absolute sorry, obsolete term. Not that they used to be used commonly, but now it's not. If you more often, you will see bacteremia and septic shock. Uh, MSOF or multi-system organ shock okay, is the end stage of uh, uncontrolled mods. Okay, it's the end stage of mods basically. Initially, you would have the multi-organ dysfunction. Okay, once the organ is dysfunctioning and is not able to perform its normal functioning capacity, will eventually result in complete organ failure. So that is a more serious form of organ dysfunction. Meaning, it results in complete failure of the organ function. Normally. Yeah, surgical infections. Surgeons usually encounter infections in two ways. If you're looking at a patient presents with an infection that requires surgical treatment, example, abscess drainage, as you can see in the picture on to your left, or in the other way, which means infection complicates taking a surgical procedure. The post-operatively uh, trauma is a bit tough. Wound infection, Jonah. Uh, that's the other one. Basically, initially present a form of an abscess that will result 
or definitely need a form of surgical intervention. Or E, on the right picture as shown, it's a complicated uh, wound, meaning it's, it's been uh, as a complication in the sense that the wound site has been infected now. Now, sepsis screen. It's a screening protocol device to find the cause of SIRS or sepsis. Yeah. Okay, sepsis screen. So the most important things are blood. Take you need the whole complete blood profile. This should be done. Uh, so we have full blood count. Full blood count is necessary. Take it. What we'll see is the white blood cell count. Take a TLC, whether it's raised or not. Uh, ESR will also be necessary. Sorry, one second. Sorry about that. Yes. Uh, the full blood count, what else is necessary is basically ESR, uh, uh, which is what erythrocyte sedimentation rate. That's what it stands for. Uh, if there's any form of inflammation in the soldier, usually this is raised. And I believe the cutoff value is around 10. Uh, next is urea and electrolytes. So you get, we'll give you a definition of uh, the dehydration of the patient, whether or not, or even the renal function. How is the renal, how are the kidneys performing? Which is also essential if you're going to further uh, uh, give him antibiotics or anything. You need to know about the renal clearance of the drugs as well. Uh, and also gives us a good indication of how far the sepsis has progressed. CRP. You see a reactive protein, another uh, marker of uh, inflammation and infection in the body. And it's usually raised when there uh, is presence of any of the two, along with blood cultures, in which we find out exactly what bacteria is responsible for the uh, sepsis. So from the blood profiling, this is uh, necessary for screening of sepsis. Uh, there, there, there are other tests that you can perform. However, these are the necessary ones that you should perform. Um, then there's uh, radiology, chest x ray to so rule out pneumonia in any way. In any case, uh, urine analysis again to rule out UTI, urinary tract infection. Now, uh, and if you're still unsure, as I said, a throat swab is necessary, take a laryngitis, and a stool culture should also be done. Strictly, this should be part of any septic screen because it's usually reserved for those with diarrhea. Management your uh, sepsis six months up here. There are six things that you need to do for uh, anybody with sepsis. Take an, and, uh, and these six things should be done within one hour. Okay. The patient presents from one hour from entry into ER or hospital. One hour from that or on, from there on. Then this should also be done in this order of priority. So you go first blood culture, then antibiotics. Hit oxygen, hit fluids, but like it recatheterize the patient last. So these are your six things that are necessary. Blood culture, wait, again, before antibiotics are necessary because they can. Uh, if, you, if you give antibiotics first, then they'll give you a false uh, idea of the blood culture. It renders it pointless, basically, if you take blood culture after the patient was given antibiotics. So antibiotics are probably the most important thing. They get following the blood culture. Mortality is reduced by 50% in severe substance if they're given within an hour of diagnosis. Throughout the whole process to it, in sepsis 6, speed is important to get how, how quick you are. That's why uh, it should be treated as an emergency and urgency, and uh, every, every, every order should be carried out in the uh, least amount of time as possible. Oxygen, take it, that's also necessary. Even if oxygen saturation appears at 50, you still need to give 100% uh, oxygen at 15 liters per minute. So the maximum via a venting mask or a mask. Uh, if there is severe sepsis, obviously. Uh, so fluids, also necessary. You get a 
support the highly likely to develop hyperlumia as the inflammatory response leads to fluid shift into the tissues. So the fluid will be shifting from your 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 capillaries and arteries into your tissue. That will result in hypovolemia and hypovolemic shock. Uh, fifth thing is lumping. So a sign of anaerobic respiration and it's bad. The elective starts to build up. So you can elect it above two indicates impending acidosis. And then catheterization. If you need to monitor urine output and hourly urine output measurements. So this is a good prognostic step basically catheterizing the patient and observing its urine output. Now, moving on. Infection that requires surgical treatment. Infection that requires surgical treatment. So, uh, obviously, when we're looking at infection that requires surgical treatment, um, let's go differentiate this and classify into two broad categories A, A, localized infection, yeah, B, specific surgical infections that are taken. Localized mechanical could be abscesses, uh, cellulitis, bronchial, bronchial, uh, lymphangitis, take uh, specific surgical infections, other than gas, gangrene, cluster DM, tetani, synergistic spreading gangrene as well. Now, well, we'll first look at the localized infections, so you can span broadly abscesses, cellulitis, and lymphangitis. Yeah. Abscess mechanic, it's a localized collection of pus. It's usually surrounded by an intense inflammatory reaction, forming a ring around the abscess, taking a wall around the abscess. Uh, it cordons it off, take it from the remaining tissue, or this major dead collection of cells, right? The definition of pus. And it presents with all the clinical features of acute inflammatory response, originally described by Celsius. Uh, in Latin words, as it's described, is calor, uh, calor, which means heat, rubor means red, is dolor, means pain, and tumor, that's like a swelling. Uh, to these can be added functional lesson, meaning loss of function. So you get that can also be added along with the others. Calor, rubor, dolor, and tumor. So you get meaning they obviously loss of function is not as a result directly, but maybe because of the pain that is caused by the infected part, in the affected part, resulting in loss of function. The full capability of that limb, arm, uh, wherever the abscess might be. Uh, all right. There's a picture of an abscess. As you can see, it's in the anterior part, sort of, sort of lateral part of the neck. It's quite large, and what you can note Important things in this is what basically uh, the, the four to five uh, Latin definitions that we just described. Kalar, rubar, dolor. Obviously, kalar you can't observe, you can have to examine. So, on, on the back of your uh, fingers, you place, if you were to place your back of your fingers onto the swelling, you would note that its temperature would definitely be uh, raised. Uh, obviously, there's a definite swelling, there's inflammation. Yeah. So we can observe at least two out of the three, uh, two out of the four findings. What is this? This is boils and frontals. Today you have multiple small uh, collections on these superficial epidermis. Yeah, and these are our frontals, which is the infection of the hair follicles. So usually in between each of them, you can see there's the hair follicle rising. This is a carbuncle. A carbuncle, usually there are common sites for all of these. Uh, usually around the areas where there's a uh, species secretions and hair follicles. Uh, carbuncles are more commonly seen in a advanced sort of absence that has become uh, even worse over time. That's not being treated adequately enough. Uh, and also more often seen in patients that have diabetes. The way to differentiate between a carbuncle and, and like, say, a sebaceous cyst or something is carbuncle has multiple openings, as you can see. Uh, there are multiple functions, not just a single opening out here. There's multiple sites where uh, you can 
can see there's pus definitely within. And all of these open up into a large uh, sort of cavity where there's pus within. This is an hydroadenitis spurred tuba, usually commonly seen in exited regions involving the lymph nodes and uh, not common nodes, the uh, ear glands in the armpits, but these are the regions. So abscess, like you said, is a biogenic organism in common. You get predominantly in which one is stuff for common sources, obviously, and causes tissue to be process and a separation. Plus, it's composed of dead and dyed white blood cells. Abscesses contain hyper-osmolar materials that draws the fluid in. Uh, we have this increases the pressure and followed by okay, This image we have macrophages, angiogenesis, and fibroblasts, all cause formation of granulation tissues. Uh, and later forms a, a superative process around it and leads to a collagen deposition as well. And if it is not drained or resorbed, Completely, this abscess can become chronic. And if it is partly sterilized with antibiotics, an antibioma can form as well. The antibioma will result in basically a further granulation tissue formation around the, uh, the swelling. So you get completely walls it off, and the swelling doesn't subside and it just forms an antibioma. So it's each of a definite treatment is definitely a drainage in order to completely resolve. Abscess. Usually, what we do uh, sometimes the surgeons prefer before incision and drainage or drainage of the abscess. Uh, usually, uh, give the antibiotic course of antibiotics before proceeding to reduce the inflammation in that area. Uh, it not only helps uh, in the post operative treatment of the abscess drainage, but also a healing process post operatively as well. All right, here's the picture of the abscess. In the center, the core is the pus around it. You can see there's the, the ring of tissues around it, right, right next to the pus is the hygienic membranes of the pus. It gets usually beneficial that we just remove it, clean the wound, clean the area, make sure none of this membrane uh, is left behind as well. Followed by this pinkish tissue, the granulation tissue, and surrounded by that is the Fat and the skin on top. Fat on the bottom, skin on top. Superficial taken. And if you were to form an antibiotic, it would definitely be around this hygienic membrane involving the granulation tissue. Right. Abscesses, if they were to spread, they usually uh, do so and track along the planes of least resistance and point towards the skin. So they always come out towards the skin. That's why you see the little. Uh, the clear pus type uh, superficially on the epidermis because that, that's the plane where there is least resistance and it, and, it, and it tries to release the pus from within by pointing out, up, outwards towards the epidermis and eventually some of them do burst and, uh, and then the pus is basically uh, drained out of the wound. Wound abscesses may discharge to take over spontaneously by tracking the surface and or held in my if it cannot track itself all the way up to the epidermis, then obviously surgically you have to incise and drain the abscess. Uh, along with abscess drainage, we need to cure it hydro. There's a tool, surgical tool that we use, it's called a curette. No, there is not a picture here, but we use that surgical tool, curette, to clean out the margins inside of the as well, to get rid of all the other membranes and uh, uh, all the other, uh, to break the block as well if there are multiple subtypes within the swimming pool. So, it also, you know, it cleans out the wound. Not only does it do that, but also prevents the uh, recurrence of uh, infection in that area. Antibiotics are indicated, obviously, the abscess is not localized, it, it's spreading cells and tissues, so if there's evidence of cell lattice, then antibodies are indicated as well. Uh, and healing by secondary intention is encouraged. Secondary intention will probably leave the wound open. So you, can, you don't suture it close. You leave it open and you dress the wound, dress it, you leave dressing uh, with any of the uh, uh, 
uh, solutions to living through the useful, high-order, disinfecting society. You just the one way you do it. Cell lines, like we just got signed by this regime, they can be better when you have a cell line. So that is defined as the function of the subcutaneous pain tissues and the lymphogenesis. Uh, which is spread of the infection along the lymphatic channels, producing characteristic red lines of lymph and joints. So you can, I believe we do have a picture for that. So if you have a cellulitis, which is, some, which is uh, the infection of the subcutaneous tissue, it can spread to the lymphatic channels, which will further cause the lymphangitis. This lymphangitis can correct the simply to see the red lines of lymphangitis and enlarge tender nodes to which they drain to of the acute lymph lines. Non superative, they're usually poorly localized, commonly caused by Streptococca, Staphylococca, or Clostridium. SIRS is common, and blood cultures are often negative in some lives. Here we go. This is a picture of cellulitis. Now, remember those polar rhubarb dolar? So you, can, you can see there is rhubarb, there's swelling, and then the teeth are down. They just want to get from a raised angle. You can see uh, if you're comparing it to this, which is part of the normal uh, skin, compare this. You see the borderline right here. And this seems, and it is basically a little raised compared to the normal skin out here. Uh, along with that, there is inflammation. Here, there's redness, all uh, pain view of the patient's Here we have lymphangitis. Now, in this, obviously, there was cellulitis to get a portion of the subcutaneous tissue, but led to lymphatic drainage of those cells from that infected site, caused lymphangitis infection of the lymphatic channels. So over here, you can perfectly see how it was initial involvement, most probably, most likely out here, which led to drainage of that area along this track right here, draining into these axillary lymph nodes. Here we have another slide of the pharyngitis to take, again depicting the classic uh, presentation of this, where you can see redness, TK, and inflammation along the characteristic signs of the pharyngitis. Draining right into the lymph nodes. Yeah. Specific surgical infections, TK. Specific surgical infections like gas gangrene, cluster DM109, and synergistic spreading gangrene will be discussed. What is gas gangrene? TK, this is usually caused by cluster DM perforages, right? And, uh, and well, these gram positive anaerobic spore bearing bacilli. They're usually normally found in nature in soil and feces. It's relevant to military and traumatic surgery and colorectal operations. Take patients who are immunocompromised, diabetic, or have malignant diseases are at greater risk. If they have wounds containing necrotic or foreign material, resulting in anaerobic conditions. There we go. This is most likely you can see multiple people as well from out here. Along with that, what else do you know? There's obviously obvious amount of discoloration. Uh, there's redness, inflammation, there's swelling, large amount of swelling. Obviously, there's inadequate flow and outflow of blood via arteries and main perspective. Obviously, there's a gas gangrene going on. Uh, gas in the tissue also can be noted on plain radiographic okay, x rays. Where you can look out here, there's large, small uh, uh, black shadows out here, small circular, and on the superficial side as well. Uh, so let's get these are all gas gangrene. Gas gangrene wound infections are. Uh, associated with severe local wound pain and crepitus. What is crepitus? Crepitus is usually a uh, gas that develops in some tissues. Obviously, there's gas gangrene that's going on, the gas cannot escape. There's no break in everything. So it will be deposited within the tissues and can also be noted in the radiograms, like we just saw earlier. Uh, 
this. So, yeah, so we deposited it in these tissues. Okay. This is known as Treptase. Treptase can also be uh, observed. Uh, cannot, it's better, like, like, this, this is a sort of a, a sign that you can uh, find out uh, examination. It can more, it can be noted in the plain writing graphs. And the wound produces a thin, brown, sweet smelling exudate in which grand staining will reveal bacteria. And uh, a demon spreading finger, polyphilies, and polygenase, polygenase, and other proteins and toxins. Uh, early systemic complications with circulatory collapse and uh, multi system organ failure follows. With the antibiotic prophylaxis should always be considered in patients at risk, especially those, uh, especially when the amputations are performed for peripheral vascular diseases with open body menstruation. And once the gas gangrene infection is established, large doses of IV and aggressive depriving of infected tissue is required. Uh, the use of hyperbaric oxygen is controversial. What is hyperbaric oxygen? It basically, you put you in a tube in which there is. Uh, Oxygen. Uh, it, it's it's said to promote wound healing and uh, all sorts of things, but it's still controversial. What is beneficial is what antibiotics take it prophylactically should be take it that will uh, considerably reduce the risk of the patient. But that's not enough. What else you need to do along with that is, is give intravenous penicillin particularly, and along with that, the important thing also that goes with it is aggressive deprivation of the tissue that is involved. Osterdium tenoid. Okay, this is another anaerobic terminal spore bearing gram positive bacterium that can cause tetanus following implantation in tissues or one which may have been trivial or Now, the spores are widespread and normally smile. The signs and symptoms of tetanus are mediated by a release of hydrotoxin, which is tetanus. Can, which affects the myoneural functions and motor neurons of the anterior hormones. So you create a short prodromal period which has a poor toxin excess. What is this? Office portonus. Office portonus position that this baby is in at the moment. It's hyper extension of the neck along with the spine and the patient is very. This is Trismus. Trismus is the classic method of facial features. This is a locked jaw toxin uh, that can be seen uh, expressing in this picture. Now, the entry wound may show a localized small area of cellulitis. Exudate or respirations may give a sample that can be sustained to show the presence of gram positive rods within it. Uh, prophylactically, however, you give tetanus toxoid, it is the best preventive treatment. But, however, treatment in an established infection requires debriving of the wound, along with antibiotic treatment with benza and the sling. Now, relaxants may also be required, okay, since it's called spasticity, and the patient may require ventilation as well as very long, because it can have a respiratory collapse. Um, associated secondary to bronchospasms, uh, which may be associated with a high mortality as well. The use of antitoxin using human immunoglobulin ought to be considered for both at risk wounds and established infections. Prophylactically, usually, tetanus toxin is one of the best preventive treatment method, but if established for trigger infection and it's better to have a minor development of the wound, followed by a Treatment. Also, with it, relaxants can be given. Synergistic spreading, big spreading. Cinnamon is a good way of temporary subdermal gangrene or even necrotizing of my shins. This is not caused by posture data. It's a mixed pattern of organisms which are responsible. It's fully formed. Bacteroids, anaerobic cervicopathies, and They have all been in the and acting in synergy together. 
Abdominal wall infections are known as malignant surface in hospital angry, and scrotal infections are known as corneas. These are just terms basically according to the site of the bingo. Their abdominal wall can be a synergistic infection known as melanie synergistic hospital angry, or if it's involved in scrotal, it's known as corneal angry. Here we have a picture of melanie synergistic angry. That's, that's the picture, that's what it looks like. And obviously over here we have more years gangway involving the squirtle area and the squirtle. Yeah. Patients are usually immunocompromised. Take in terms of, you know, uh, like for example diabetes mellitus patients. And the wound would be minor but severely contaminated. And are, those are most likely to be the cause. For severe wound pain, we see signs of spreading inflammation can be seen uh, with it's obviously your gas can be developed with and smell see, along with uh, the rest of the moral signs that are seen like this uh, uh, show that the infection is spreading. Subdermal spread of gambi is always much more extensive than uh, appears to be from initial examination. Uh, and untreated will obviously lead to widespread gambi in multi system organ failure. Broad spectrum antibody therapy is usually given along with aggressive circulatory support. Take it locally, dry, the don't bear to do extensive debris, or even amputation if needed. Now, infections complicating a surgical procedure, which can be obviously wound infections, they're the most common type. Complications of surgical sites. Now, primarily, uh, classification of these, uh, of these sources of infection primary to acquired from endogenous sources such as that from the perforated peptic ulcer or secondary you know, exogenous take it. and uh, these can be acquired from operating theater because such as hospital acquired infections take it, such as in, in with air filtrations or something you yeah, award and poor hand washing complaints from staff or attendants or the patient uh, him or herself or from contamination and or after surgery, such as an anastomotic leak. Surgical site infections, take the SSIs. The infection of the surgical wound can be defined as invasions of organisms through tissues, followed by breakdown of local systemic host defense. Take a local the way to basically there's a break in the field that is promoting the access of the in, uh, infected organisms. And host defense meaning the malnutrition or Comorbids such as diabetes, leading to cellulitis and enteritis, abscess formation, or even bacteremia post op because they can occur. And surgical site infection typically occurs within 30 days after surgery. So that is your grade period in which surgical site infections can occur. Now, what are some of the types of surgical site infections? You have organ and space, so you get deep incisional, yet yeah, superficial incisional. Superficial incision occurs uh, just in the area, obviously, of the skin where the incision was uh, initially made. Deep incision is, occurs uh, beneath the incision area, in deeper tissues such as muscles or in fissures and usually surrounding the muscles. Those are known as deep incision surgical side infections. Organ or space, and this is the dead space that we talked about earlier, that if left behind can lead to collection of uh, inflammatory markers or even a serious fluid that can become infected or it can also be the organ so the type of this type of infection can be in any any area of the body rather than skin muscle and fascia involved in the surgery such as body organ or space between the organs as well now major and minor surgical side infections the major surgical side infections is defined as a wound that either discharges significant you know, us spontaneously or secondarily due to procedure to drainage. Now, patient may have systemic signs such as tachycardia, pyrexia, raised white cell count, and obviously systemic inflammatory response syndrome might be there as well, along with its uh, signs and symptoms. This is classified as a major surgical side infection. A minor, we have K2 infections, many surgical 
or the serious food, but should not be associated with excessive discomfort, systemic times, or delayed return. So minors should still proceed with either a post-operative antibiotics, dressing cures, which is in daily dressing, requires wound cures, and early return home, and discharging the patient uh, and preventing them from further hospital acquired infections. There's a picture of a major surgical side infection. Obviously, you can see it's not just limited to the superficial dermis or dermis, it's definitely deeper. And yeah. Here is a minor in the middle, as you can see right here. Uh, the rest of the wound seems to have healed quite well. The margins are opposed. And yeah, except for out here, it seems like he's uh, usually probably a superficial infection. Surgical side. And surgical side infection rates relating to the wound contamination. All right, type of surgery. So if you have different types, right, uh, you can categorize them into uh, an amount of uh, bone contaminations uh, involved within that surgery. It could be clean, just made, no viscous is open. For example, thyroidectomy, thyroid gland, yeah, mastectomy, long in the breast. Uh, it's mid function rate, obviously, gum at 1 to 2%, and the rate before prophylaxis is also 1 to 2%. Now, Moving on, you have from clean to clean contaminated. This means viscous are open. Viscous in the sense are, is the, reaching the peritoneum. And there's uh, minimal spillage that could be associated. It's also known as clean, it comes under as clean contaminant. This is for example, polycystic involving removal of gallbladder. In men, uh, usually gallbladder can be preferred and result in uh, small amounts of bile leakage. So it will still be considered as clean contaminant. Infection rate in these uh, types of surgery is less than 10. And the rate before prophylaxis, gastric, uh, gastric, gastric is 30% and biliary is 20%. Right, moving on to the next, we have the contaminated ones. This may be open the viscous with spillage or inflammatory disease such as appendectomies, intestinal anastomosis. There is a definite village, there is an open viscous and or a inflammatory disease. Infection rate is obviously more than 20 and rate before prophylaxis is up to 60 percent. The fourth category is a dirty uh, type of surgery in which there is pus or perforation or incision. There's a example of that would be an abscess drainage where the infection rate is less than 40 or up to 60% or more in rate before prophylactic treatment. Now, major and minor surgical side infections. Differentiation between major and minor in the definition of surgical side is important. There are scoring systems in order to score the severity of the wound infections to give particularly useful in surveillance and research as well, in order to improve better care for surgical sites uh, and prevent them from infections. The asepsis wound score, at asepsis, A-S-E-P-S-I-S wound score, the sound pattern and wound weight system. Now, what are the criterion points for asepsis wound score? It's made you have additional treatment uh, antibiotics for wound infection. These are the criteria for it. Uh, drainage of pus under local anesthesia, debridement of wound, uh, debridement of wound under general anesthesia, because I don't know, obviously, when you is either in an area where it's required to patients put urabi hosh it's usually where uh, the risk chances of West Indian European plus uh, it could be deeper or involving uh, cavities. Uh, thoracic cavity, so obviously the wound scoring is much worse compared to local anesthesia, drainage of plus under local anesthesia. Serious discharge daily, so you get 0 to 5% on the erythema, brutal ending sedate, separation of deep tissues, isolation of bacteria from wound, stay as inpatient for long over 14 days as a result of wound infection. So you, uh, 
तो ये सब चीजें एडिशनल ट्रीटमेंट में जो है वो सब आ गया फॉर ए ठीक है आह एस फॉर सीरियस डिस्चार्ज ई फॉर इन्फ्लेमेशन ई फॉर इन्फ्लेमेशन एस फॉर सब्जेक्ट आई आइसोलेशन ऑफ बैक्टीरिया स्टे एस स्टे एस एन पेशेंट फॉर लॉन्ग स्टे इन हॉस्पिटल फॉर ओवर फोर्टी डेज इट्स स्कोर फॉर फाइव ऑफ़ द फर्स्ट सेवेन डेज South Hampton wound grading system. So, which one is based on the weight appearance? Okay. Zero, which one is the normal heal? Okay. Uh, that's the first grade. Zero. The bruising and so we will be one a considerable amount for the other b and then mild arrhythmia along with c one c second grade is arrhythmia plus other signs of inflammation take it will get goes again two a at one point will be rolling at one point two b around the sutures two c along the wound two d around the wound uh, along the wound sorry two c along the wound and two d around the wound. Along the wound, but it's still uh, it's not just around the sutures, but it's along the wound, and around the wound, the look is completely involving as well. Three third category, uh, third grade is clear or hemosiris discharge from the wound. Three A at one point only, usually up two centimeter. Three B along the wound, more than two centimeter. Three C large volumes, and three D prolonged for more than three days. Major complication. Was my four to a more plus four a at one point again four b along the wound or further of grade five will be deep or severe wound infection with or without infection. Now this may obviously break down here. The total requiring operation will be obviously other infections complicating surgeries can also be chest infections, urethritis, urinary tract infections. Intravenous central line infections, infections of implanted prosthetic materials can also be another uh, uh, pseudomembranous blood is usually caused by cluster gene deficit. Inappropriate sequential use of severe several antibodies puts patients most at risk. So the key symptoms of, uh, of bloody diarrhea, pseudomembranous development, and elderly are particularly at risk. So severe blood is mainly to preparation for emergency selecting in that case. Uh, there's a high mortality associated with it, and treatment usually involves antibiotics through uh, immunosome or antibodies. Now, we're going to briefly look at a prophylaxis. Take a treatment which is given or action taken to prevent the disease from happening. Avoiding surgical side infections when you're at staff should always wash the hands with weak patients. There are one patient who wash your hand on the next. That's necessary. The length of patient stay in hospital should be kept away. Pre-operative shaving should be avoided if possible. Okay. Antiseptic skin preparation should be standardized. Attention to theater technique and discipline. Avoid hypothermia, pre-operative, perioperative, pre-operative, and ensure supplemental oxygenation in recovery is available as well. The choice of antibiotics for prophylaxis can cause the empirical cover against the expected pathogens. Obviously, single shot IV administration of infection of excision. Repeat only in prosthetic surgeries, long operations, or if there is excessive blood loss. All right. Continue therapy if there is unexpected contamination. Benzophilin should be used if cluster gene gas gangrene infection is possible. In patients with heart valve disease or prosthetics, should be protected from bacteria caused by dental work, urethral instrumentation, or the serial surgeries. Now, bacteria is involved in surgical infections. Uh, you know, uh, Streptococcus, pediatric streptococcus, type of streptococcus is going to be generally pathogenic and later spread in cellulitis, mosquitoes, and then also deeper into the tissue involved. Streptococcus fake gloves found in synergy with other organisms such as gamma-related uh, streptococcus, crypto streptococcus, which is anaerobic. Staphylococcus, uh, uh, V. fake gloves, the Staphylococcus aureus, take a Staphylococcus of your dermatitis. Cluster DM species can also be seen. Is a graph of positive amplification. Take the positive uh, deficit is one of them. Positive tetanus, positive hyperemesis. Positive deficit is the one that causes.
classes, student membrane topologies, like we discussed. Um, we have an anaerobic gram negative bacilli that is well with bacteria. This may be E. coli, Klebsiella, Proteus, Pseudomonas, or Pectoroids, species Pectoroids, Pregulus. Uh, can be associated with type of surgeries as well. This may include either vascular or orthopedic, uh, GI tubes, or gastro. It may specifically also depend to the type of surgery. Vascular metastasis you will encounter Staphylococcus epidermidis, aureus, or anaerobic uh, negative bacillus. And the prophylactic regimen suggested are three doses of uh, fluoxacetin with or without gentamicin, mycomycin, or rapamicin if MRC and is or cell resistance of course is a person. Uh, orthopedics may you know be on the lookout for staphylococcus epidermis or ores. And one to three doses of raw spectrum cephalosporins are usually efficient enough for gentamicin beans. So future gastric surgeries may you may encounter enterobacteria, enterococci, including anaerobic or variant staphylococci. One to three doses of second generation cephalosporin along with maternal and severe contaminations. If you're doing pill research involving the liver and the gallbladder, uh, the then enterobacteria guy, mainly E. coli, and one dose of second generation cells for is suggested. Small bowel surgeries with enterobacteria and ropes, and again, we could do second generation cells for uh, with or without metronic. So appendix, colorectal, uh, is my enterobacteria and ropes, mainly bacteroids, and three doses of second generation cells for. Uh, the use of oral poorly absorbed antibodies is one for sure in the appendix colorectal surgeries. Viral infections. Take a, when discussing viral infections, uh, we, we, uh, we need to discuss about uh, MP and C along with HIV infections. Uh, universal precautions should be taken when there's a risk of splash uh, during the procedure. So you need to take all kinds of uh, protective uh, measurements, particularly particularly with power tools. Where is power tools the most common use? What type of surgery? Orthopedic surgery. Use of full face mask, IW, is always recommended, along with protective stuff, safety wear goggles, or even a face shield, preventing you from these uh, splashes or uh, particles. Use of fully waterproof disposable gowns and drapes, take along with them, particularly during serial conversions. Boots to be worn, not clogs. Okay, clogs are basically uh, uh, sort of a raised form of uh, shoes that you normally surgeons to wear, but there are still areas where your feet is a little exposed. The boots to it completely covers your feet up to your uh, lower leg, ankles and everything else. You know. So boots are uh, definitely recommended. Over clocks to avoid injury as well from drop sharps. The you be exposed to the foot or butt sharp if there's uh, sharps like needles, blade, so many things on the operation table that could drop and, and cause an injury onto your foot. So, double clothing if needed, take a large size on the inside, a, a larger size on the inside is more comfortable usually, and allow only essential personnel in theater to get. Avoid unnecessary movement in theater as well. Limits the accident from happening. Respect is required for shops. Take note with passage in a kidney dish. What is a kidney dish? Kidney dish is a uh, kidney or a bean shaped dish in which it's recommended that we pass all the shops. So shops and kidney also can uh, usually commonly throw blades, the surgical blades, certainly. And respect should be given in uh, handling shops as well in, in, in the form that you. Uh, Pass it along or uh, store it on the operation table. A slow, meticulous operative technique is needed with minimal bleeding. And that is it for today. That is all we have for today for surgical infections. Uh, we still have a few minutes left. So if you guys have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate. And otherwise, thank you very much.